Hey, everybody. We're here with Dr. John LaPook. So I know you're, you're not a politician. Uh, you don't talk about politics. But we are in the middle of an election right now, coming into the home stretch. We just had a debate on Tuesday. His diagnosis is on Friday morning, 1 a.m., something like that, at least when we found out. How long is a reasonable quarantine? And the objective of this question is, can he be at that next debate, which is less than two weeks away? Well, typically somebody who's infected, remember, he will be in isolation because he's actually infected. And it's supposed to be for 10 days from the time that the symptom begins, because after 10 days, uh, it hasn't been shown that you can infect other people, that the virus can infect you. So he should be uh, in isolation. Now, for the president of the United States, he's essential personnel. I'm sure he won't be literally in isolation. There'll be people coming in there. But people who are with him should be geared up. They should have pr protective equipment. They should be wearing masks and, and hopefully goggles, gowns, gloves in the hospital and even outside the hospital because of the potential uh, for spread by yeah. airborne uh, route. Uh, then people should be protected. And I should add, the reason why the word airborne has taken on such a, a big charged meaning is that the CDC is concerned when people hear the word airborne, they're going to think smallpox, tuberculosis, measles, which really has the, uh, a tremendous ability to go through the air. And they're worried that when they hear the word airborne that for COVID-19, that that's going to say, well, you're going to have to change uh, your guidance, have more stringent protective measures. But actually, I spoke to them about this. They said, look, even if it is air airborne, it's not felt to be spread by the airborne route nearly as much as, say, measles or tuberculosis. And I think that's very important, because if we acknowledge that it's happening through the air, through these aerosols, then we can fix it. As people like Kim Prather have said and Joe Allen from Harvard, they said, once you acknowledge it, you do the things that you should do, which are basically improve the ventilation, which uh, in a lot of buildings is not sufficient. Do you think Biden was in any danger Tuesday, because uh, that's in the period of time, as I understand it, that the president could have been infected. Yeah, I am concerned about that. I mean, I'm happy to hear today that he was a little bit more than 12 feet away. But if the, vi if the president had even a little bit of virus in there, uh, with this potential to have aerosol spread, it could have gone across. They were out there for a while. And we know from aerosol science that the louder you speak, the more, the higher number of these aerosols. And there was a lot of loud speaking there. And that is why Dr. Fauci is so adamant about people not going to bars indoors. Because what happens in a bar, Stephen, right? You, um, you can't hear because everybody's talking so loud. And so you say, well, here, come closer. Let me come closer to you. And I'll talk louder. And I've been drinking. And I don't have a mask on because I'm drinking. So the aerosols are coming. I'm talking louder. And uh, that's a, just a, a recipe for spreading uh, COVID-19, for spreading SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19. So if there's anything people take out of this tonight is really wear the mask. The mask works. Mm -hmm. It's not 100 percent, but it's something that's very important for everybody to do in the proper setting. You heard Jonathan LaPook. Drink alone and drink at home. <laughs> Dr. John LaPook, everybody. Thank you for being here, doctor. Thank we'll you. be right back with 60 Minutes anchor John Dickerson. <laughs>